Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to talk about Intel's included coolers. Now, with um, pretty much all, I'm sure if I say the word all, someone will point out one that doesn't, but pretty much all of Intel's chips that don't support overclocking have come with a, a cooler in the box. So, like, this is the i5-9400. It doesn't end in the letter K. So that means it's not overclockable. It does support Intel's Turbo Boost, with, which is sort of its own internal overclocking technology based on heat and uh, available power and so forth. I have another video on that. Um, but anyway, it's not an overclockable chip, manually overclockable, and so it comes with an included cooler. And that cooler is like this. It's all aluminum. And, you know, kind of small, doesn't have, there's not a whole lot of aluminum there. And it gets the job done. It gets pretty loud whenever there is an all core load on it, meaning, you know, all six cores are pegged out to the max. So I was excited to see that the new Intel 10th generation i7 came with, um, a little more upgraded cooler. Now this is an 8-core 16-thread processor, so two more cores, and then it includes hyper-threading for the total of 16 threads. Again, 8 cores with hyper-threading, 16 threads. So I was kind of excited to see, though, that it came with a higher-end cooler. So this is it. It's all black, so it's not even, you know, you're not seeing that aluminum color, but it's I guess it's painted or powder coated. And then when you turn it over, you see that it's got a copper core. So it's not all aluminum like the other one. It has a copper core. And if you looked really closely, I don't know if you can see it on here, but the, there's more cop, excuse me, there's more aluminum in this one. The fins are a little thicker at the base. So there's more mass involved with this one. So I thought, well, maybe this will cool the 10700 eight cores, 16 threads, and be a little bit quieter. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. In fact, it, it turned out to be kind of a massive fail. So let, let's take a look at that. So right now, what I've got up on the screen is, uh, I've just got, um, you know, Task Manager up there running, and, you know, IDA64 is up there. Yes, I know it says trial version. Uh, I just loaded Windows on, there's also not a Windows key in here. And um, anyway, I just loaded this up just for this one little demonstration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start IDA64, and it's going to put an all-core 100% load on this chip, and this chip boosts to about 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz. So watch the speed jump up to 4.6 or so. And then our temperature is graphed up here, and any thermal throttling is graphed down here. Now what we see is almost immediately this chip will start thermal throttling, probably uh, within the next few seconds. I hear the fan ramping up. It's gotten significantly louder. We're pushing, uh, not, we're on 90 degrees right now, 95 degrees. I know these might be hard to read. Now we're, we're overheating the chip and we're throttling about 8% or so. And we're now pushing 100 degrees Celsius. Now, as you probably know, that's the boiling point of water. So uh, you could boil water on this chip at this point. And if we let this run long enough, you know, we're, the highest we're seeing right now is about 98, 99 degrees Celsius. We let it run a little bit longer, we'll actually see that 100 degrees Celsius number. Now, if you've been watching over here, you'll notice this clock speed going down. Well, this thermal CPU thermal throttling you're seeing, what it throttles is the clock speed. Now, we just hit 100 over here. The clock speed has to drop for the chip to cool down. So the chip is automatically slowing itself down, just dropping below 4.5 gigahertz. Now we're hitting 100 degrees over here, and we're seeing a max throttling of 22%. And it's just gonna get worse. I don't wanna run this chip at 100 degrees too terribly long, but you get the idea. Uh, we were running the test for a minute and 45 seconds. We're hitting triple digits on the um, on the processor 
and we're getting thermal throttling. I did actually do a repaste on this one of the thermal material. I put some high quality on there. That didn't really seem to make any difference uh, at all. I also tested this chip on an i5-9600K. Now that is an overclockable chip. But that chip, um, I mean, excuse me, that uh, processor normally doesn't come with a cooler. Um, but it's not adequate to run that processor on this all aluminum one. But when I ran the 9600K, which is a six core, six thread uh, processor, and I ran it at stock clock speeds, this one did a really good job. So, um, Probably what I'm going to end up doing is you, you know, repurposing some of these coolers on lower end chips to get better cooling performance uh, rather than having to use an aftermarket cooler on those. Uh, because again, it did really well on the 9600K. Now, when it comes to the 10700K, when you see us use this chip, no way we're using the included cooler with it. We're going to use uh, an aftermarket tower cooler, which will keep the temperatures around 75, 80 degrees, something like that, a good 20, 25% cooler, and it will maintain its clock speed. It will not have to thermally throttle. So um, yeah, if you're looking at a system with a 10700 in it, um, it's probably going to, unless the company did their due diligence like we do and test, uh, they just slap the cooler on and call it good, um, you may wind up with an in inadequate cooler. And it, it's kind of shocking to me that Intel would even include something that clearly doesn't work. Um, yeah, so, kind of a fail. Um, but there you go. Don't use the included cooler that comes with the 10700 if you plan to put an all-core 100% load on your processor.